Hey friends, Tiavi Tiavi TV. I want you to know that God is for us. He loves us so much. Jesus is on our side. We get this picture of some God in the sky, Zeus type Orwellian government that wants to crush us. No, he is a friend. The Holy, he sent the Holy Spirit. Jesus had to go so the Holy Spirit and would come and live inside of us. Isn't that awesome to live inside of us and be our advocate, our friend, would fight for us, would run to our aid. That's what it says. That's what Jesus says in the, in the book of John and other places. Run to our aid to help us. In Hebrews, it says that Jesus was t tempted in every way, tempted by every sin that you're tempted, every everything that you lust, whatever. He was tempted in every way so that he would be able to know how you feel and run to your aid. But he's touched with the infirmity, with the, I forget the exact word, but he knows how you feel and what you go through. And he can run to your aid and help you in time of need. So God is for us. See, Jesus brought a view of God the Father that was unlike what they'd had before, mostly. A lot of times, like us, they see this, God that just wants to crush you if you don't do everything just right to the jot and tittle to perfectly line up. Well, many of you might have had fathers like that, but that is not how the creator of you, you are created. I think that you could see that if you just step back out of, oh, just let your spirit, you have a spirit. Oh, Shuta Karinima, how do I say this, Lord? If you could set, step back away from all the programming the world puts into your mind, you would understand and believe that you were created. I mean, it's simple. Everything around you is so complex and intricate. It could, it had to be, there had to be a creator. It takes more faith to believe that there was no creator that's just chance, circumstance. No, it's impossible. It's just mathematically impossible. Mathematics should prove that there's a creator. And whether you believe that's alien, some alien race somewhere far away, or that you have a personal Savior, Jesus, and a Father God and the Holy Spirit that is the Creator and that is inside of you, and you can feel His peace that is with you and that can run to your aid in time of need. I tell you, and when you mess up, we all are going to mess up. We can run to that throne of grace in time of need. What does that mean? We, he, we run to him, not away from him. Like in the Garden of Eden, we ran away from him and hid and, and clothed ourselves uh, with, uh, with his leaves. No, 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 we don't hide. We run to him. He knows we're F-ups. He knew it already. He knows the end from the beginning. And he believes in you and he's speaking life into you. And this is what I want to get to you. You have a destiny and a purpose. You're going to stumble. You're going to fall. And you're going to go back into sin. You're going to go back into the things that you came out of. You have, still have flesh. Even though it was crucified with Christ on that cross and you rose again from the dead, you're going to stumble back into that same crap. It's the uh, same, you know, like the prodigal stumbling right back into that mud and wallowing in it. But when you get up and you realize that the Father is waiting for you with open arms, open loving arms, waiting to restore you and put that ring of authority right back on your hand. Now there's the prodigal's brother. If you haven't read the story of the prodigal, this is what you got to read in in um in the Bible. It's in many different places. Jesus is get Jesus gave that parable. Read it so you'll understand what I'm saying. And I, I don't want to go into all of it here, but the prodigal's brother was angry that when the prodigal son came home from partying and blowing all the money with prostitutes or whatever, falling back into the same old crap like we do, he came back to the father. The father was waiting with open arms to love him and take him. He killed the fatted calf. He killed, he, that's the best thing he had. He, he had a party for him. And the brother was mad, was angry. And see, that shows the, the religious people, the churchy people, I'm not talking bad against the church or anything. I'm just saying that we can all get into that that snooty, well, I did all this right, and they effed up, and they fell, and they, they didn't do A, B, C right. God is not like that. He's the loving Father with open arms, always ready to lift us up, and He's not the angry brother. And that's what Jesus wanted us to see. We can't be the angry brother. We have to line with our Father who loves, 
who loves. We got to love like a father. We got to love like Jesus. We need to get a hold of love. And you know how you do this. We can't do it in our own strength. We give the little bit of love that we have. Say, I love you, Jesus. I love you with my whole heart. And as we begin to say, I love you, Jesus. Have me. I surrender, even though we're going to mess up and fall. But we begin to see that he is for us and not against us. And we he floods us with that love for others and that peace that we need to walk in. So we can change the world for love. We, he doesn't need more angry, bitter people. He doesn't need more prodigal son brothers. He needs people so full of love, so full of Jesus, so full of hope for the hopeless. There's people all around you in despair. Maybe some of your friends that are lonely and, and at the end of their rope. I just prayed with one of my friends yesterday. They need you. They need your prayer. They're at the end of the rope. Call, Be led by the Holy Ghost. Call a friend. And they might just need to hear your voice that day. They might need encouraged. Your words are powerful. And um, that's why I'm encouraging you today with this. I want you to know that God is for you. we got to get this mean, mad God out of our head and see that he's for us and that he loves us and that he's always running to our aid. He doesn't want us to stay in the mud. He doesn't want us to stay in sin because it, it's a heavy weight upon us. It, it'll make you age you and make you look old. It'll take your peace. It'll take everything from you. It's death. It seems good. It's like rat poison. Mm, I'm going to nibble on that rat poison. And, and we're drawn to it. And our flesh wants it. It wants that hit of adrenaline or whatever we get. It, it's like drugs, you know. Sin is a drug. But in the end, it kills. It's death. But the love of Jesus and his grace brings peace. My arm's starting to hurt. i got to cut this short. Jesus, just let us know that we have a destiny and a purpose and that you're for us. And that we follow you. Lift us back up. And we need to spend time hearing your voice and, and getting with you. Just praying in the Spirit if we don't know what to pray. And just hearing and being led by you to a, a, a world in desperate need of love of Jesus. I love you guys. You're watching Tiavi, Tiavi TV. Talk to you soon.